I am not a safe bet. Let me tell you a story about a pregnant woman. A young pregnant woman, a sophomore in college, for whatever reasons, becomes pregnant, and she has two friends. One friend she goes to, you know, she goes to this friend, she feels comfortable, she feels like she could speak her mind, she feels like she won't be pressured or judged. And this friend is great at listening. This friend is great at just being there. You know, many of you probably have those type of friends. Now, the second friend that this pregnant young lady has is not going to just sit there and agree with everything and tell you what you want to hear so you feel okay. And so this friend comes from a more judging perspective, a more opinionated perspective. And in the situation, this young pregnant woman and she's trying to look for some advice or she's just going to her friends about the situation of her being pregnant in college as a sophomore with the first friend she goes to this friend and that friend consoles her that it's okay you know it's 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 totally okay that you're pregnant you know you know, whatever you believe, like if you believe that you can handle this, then it's okay. If you believe that this is the right decision, then it's okay. You know, whatever it is, you know, if you if you just want to spend this time and just, you know, let's not even talk about it. Let's just watch Netflix or let's just chill. Let's go out to eat. You know, let's just make this situation less real than it really is. Now that's friend number one. We're gonna call friend number one a safe bet. Friend number two. This friend, you go to them and they re recognize the situation you're already in. They realize that being a sophomore in college, pregnant, young lady, it's probably not the best circumstance to be in right now. And so they're going to come with a lot of opinions, um, saying what they think you should do. Obviously, they have listened. They have understood where you're coming from and how you feel about the situation. And so they're just giving you suggestions. They're trying to guide you in the right way. Um, they're going to try and put their opinion as a challenge. Like, they're going to question, do you think this is the right move? Do you think being pregnant is the right move? Can you really handle this? How are you going to support this? Do your parents support this? And so they're that type of friend that you go to that can look objectively for you on the perspective or situation that you're in. Now, so now that we understand the two different types of friends, the safe bet, who is going to agree with everything you say and tell you what you want to hear, then the not safe bet, we're going to call that the night not safe bet, they're the friend that's, that is going to be opinionated, is going to be judging. What you need to realize is that both friends, whether it seems like it or not, they both have good intentions. They both care about you. They both want, is, want you to experience the best in life and they want the best for you. They truly do. One friend, the safe bet, 
obviously cares more about your comfort. They care more about, you know, your present moment. And they just want you to be okay. The second friend, on the other hand, cares about you. And they care about what you're going through so much that they feel that there needs to be a solution. And that solution needs to be right there and then. And so that's why they're going to be more they're going to feel more obligated to tell you what you should do or the routes that you should take from what you tell them, from what the pregnant person tells them. So both of them have good intentions and they want the best for you. It's just that the way that they approach the relationship looks differently. So now let's talk about the pregnant young lady. So you have the pregnant young lady who is in the situation that she's in and she goes to these two friends and she obviously gets a different feeling from these two friends. She obviously looks at these friends differently and there's a reason, you know, there's a reason why she goes to each friend. The two, the safe bed and the non-safe bed. And she knows, see, this pregnant young lady knows by now her friend. So she knows when there's a time to go to the safe bed and when there's a time to go to the not safe bed and vice versa. So the pregnant lady obviously has to recognize, that, like I was saying, that both friends are coming with good intentions. So don't take it wrong. And the pregnant young lady has to be responsible with when she goes to these two friends. The two friends have to be responsible as well. For instance, the safe bet has to be more encouraging in a way that they want to see not only the best for that person in the moment, but the best for that person in the future. So that's the only issue with the safe bet. They're so caught up in the present moment where they feel like if the present moment's good, then everything's good. Which in all actuality is true to a certain degree because of what you do today, it does affect your tomorrow. So if today you feel like for instance, people who go to the gym, they have a routine. If they miss out on a day and then the next day they miss out on another day, they're going to be held back. They're going to be behind. And so their results aren't going to come in the time that they wanted them to come. So there's going to be a holdback. So that safe bet needs to understand that this, that today is just as important as tomorrow so today whatever you do is going to affect your tomorrow the not safe bet the issue with the not safe bet is that they understand that what happens today is going to affect tomorrow and so that's why they're overdrive on Let's do this for the solution of this happening in the future. Let's get this fixed. And instead of taking notes from the safe bet and being more flexible instead of rigid. Flexible in the sense of, okay, I understand right now you're sad and you want, don't want to really talk. So that not safe bet friend has to understand when the pregnant lady comes for whatever reason and they're just sad or they just want to watch a movie, just let them watch a movie. That's what it is to be flexible in that moment, to just let them be human in that moment, which is important. It's important to just be human sometimes. So that is what's going to help balance out that friendship of okay I want you to be human in this moment um, and make sure you feel okay 
but in the next few moments, I'm still gonna give you what I think should happen so that you can be better, so that I can help your situation as the friend that I am. So both friends play a, an important role in this young pregnant woman's life. And so that's what I'm trying to get at. I am, right now in my life, I am not a safe bet. I know that I definitely am not because of how geared my mind is towards growth. And so it becomes a f infectious to the people around me. And so I am very like on top of my friends about, hey, we're, especially at this age when I'm 23, we're at an age where we are young individuals trying to figure out our lives. So that's exactly what we need to do. And I'm going to help you as the friend that I am. If I'm fr And my friends know this about me. I'm going to try and help you become your best self. And I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to challenge you as well. My encouragement comes off well because I can look at someone in a terrible situation that is trying, but they're still trying in that situation and tell them that I recognize your, your fight. I recognize what you're doing and I self-affirm you. I affirm you because you need to be affirmed in this moment that what you're doing is not a waste of time. It's important. Now, I also know when there's a time to challenge my friend because I believe that if you get too comfortable at this age in our lives, you'll get lost in the sauce or left behind. And so there are times when I could be more challenging with like my questions and just like my observation. And so in this case, with the young pregnant woman, I'm gonna, if she comes to me, you know, not to say that um, that's something I would want to happen in my life or a situation I would want, but if it does happen, I'm going to be questioning, do you understand what's about to happen? You have this child in your sophomore year of college, life will get much harder than it is already. I mean, do you even think you'll have time to study? Do you even know if you'll get to classes? Where, where will your baby be? <laughs> like, where, where would, would you keep your baby? You know, do you think staying in school is the right thing to do? I mean, if you could, then great. Shouldn't you get some support? You know, shouldn't you do something to be proactive? Do you even want this baby? Have you considered other options like adoption? So, and if you're, let's just, for example, if you're the, a pr young pregnant woman in college right now, with all due respect, I am just coming from a genuine place of care because I would like you to be prepared. I would like you to understand before you get to a situation where all of this just hits you all at once and then you feel overwhelmed at that point. So I'm trying to prepare you for what's about to come, the reality of everything. And that's where I'm coming from. I'm not coming in an offensive way, saying that you're not capable of handling the situation. I'm not saying that, you know, you don't already know the answer to these questions. I'm just trying to fully understand where you're coming from. So that's my side of it, of being a safe bet. What I can say is that because I am very opinionated, 
encouraging, challenging. And this is my way of helping you grow. I also understand that at times people just want to be people. Really, people just want to be human. They just want to be in those in certain moments. And so I've learned over my past friendships, relationships, that it's important to also keep that side of that bond sacred, that human side of it, where you guys, instead of, you know, interrogating this person or interviewing this person, you're just going to the movies or watching Netflix together. Or you're just making smoothies together, making milkshakes together, going to the city to walk around, going to the park, um, watching documentaries, going to an educational function together. You know, I understand that that's important as well. Um, and I'm also getting better at it because I wasn't as good as I, <laughs> I wasn't that good before. <laughs> okay, so what's the takeaway from all of this? If you're a young individual as myself, really all ages, if you're old, you're young, it's important to recognize the people's purpose in your life. Because there is a purpose for every person in your life. Um, and I think if we understand the boundaries, if we understand the functions of our bonds with other people, then it would better benefit us to growing to becoming our full self. Um, and not only knowing those people in your life well, but also knowing yourself well. Because that young pregnant woman has to know or be accountable to know which friend to go to in certain moments. Tragic moments happen all the time. Um, a lot of sad things happen. Deaths happen in the, in the family. People around you die. And we have to recognize, you know, after you've dealt with it with yourself, I think that's more important. Dealing with it with yourself is probably the most important outside of friends. But because we're talking about friends right now, after you, you've dealt with um, the, the situation on your own, okay, who, am, who do I need to go to? Do I just need to talk and have someone listen right now? Or do I have nothing to say and I need to go to someone <laughs> to just sit in front of them, tell them what's going on in my situation and have them guide me through all of the chaotic spaghetti <laughs> both people are very important because one makes you feel human one makes you feel hope and vice versa at times but both people are important so that's what I want to get across that's the message Get to know the people around you well so that you can love them more. You can love yourself more. And you can learn, learn to love others more. So it's important. Thank you guys once again for tuning in. I know 
last week you got a video. It wasn't me, obviously. <laughs> the week before you got another video. It wasn't me, obviously. <laughs> um, but those are still videos that are important. When I put them out, um, they speak life. They uh, are encouraging. And I have plenty more videos like that. I have plenty more interviews with other people that I want to post um, on the YouTube channel. But what I really want to do is get into a mode where I'm consistently um, vlogging. So I'm getting on camera and I'm giving uh, messages of the day and sharing my perspective a little bit more so that you guys can get to know me a little bit more. Um, I really, really appreciate the amount of love that you guys are giving. Um, the views are rising. The subscribers are rising. Um, not that it's important, but it is important because the message is what's important to reach the ends of the earth. And so the more you guys support, the more other people are able to um, get this piece of information. If you feel like the information is important and it helps you or it enlightens you or you get some revelation, then share it with others so that other people could experience that same thing. You know, we're all human here. We're all, I hope we're all human here. I hope there's no, okay, I'm kidding. We're all trying to do life together. And the more we could connect with each other, bridge gaps between each other, and break down walls between each other is the more that we'll be better off as a human race. Um, so let's benefit the human race. Starting with a subscribe. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys very much. Um, God bless you. And I will, that's one thing that I want to do is, sorry, in my mind, there's one thing I want to do is continue to speak life. Um, I'm a Christian young man, and I have such a beautiful relationship with the Lord that has been a roller coaster in the past couple of years, but it, now it's starting to be like a train track, and it's very stable and consistent, and that's because my relationship with him is being more consistent. And so one thing I want to do is continue to speak from that part of myself, that living part of myself because God is great and I believe that Jesus Christ doesn't just love me and doesn't want a consistent relationship with me alone he wants one with you as well so thank you very much um you guys have a wonderful and great evening and rest of the week